Kia ora, I'm Monique Bradley and today I'm speaking with researcher and coming into his fifth year medical research student Jack Moran about some incredible research he's been conducting this year on retinopathy. Welcome Jack. Thanks. Welcome to the studio. So before we jump into today's conversation, I want to find out a little bit about you so I and our viewers <laughs> both have context around what you've been researching. So tell me about your educational journey, what you've been studying and where you're at, at in your stage of education. Cool, yeah. So um, I'm heading to my fifth year of medicine right now and I've been working with research in the eye for about a year now. Yeah. Uh, and um, that's sort of been my background for for some time now, yeah. So what got you interested in working in specifically with eyes? With the eyes. Well, um, I guess within the field of medicine, um, when, you ask so when you ask someone what's their biggest fear, most people would say losing their sight. And I guess within medicine, being able to restore sight is one of the easiest things to do. It only takes 20 minutes, a simple operation, and yeah, you can restore sight with things like cataract, for example. So yeah, I just thought that's pretty cool when that, that, that's sort of what inspired me to go down pursuing that. Wow, that's incredible. So you're currently studying and you're doing research projects mm -hmm. as well. So where does this take you in your, um, in your profession? What's, what mm -hmm. are the next steps for you? Yeah, well, for me, I hope to first of all finish medicine, <laughs> graduate hopefully, um, and uh, continue doing research um, just on the side part time um, as I work my way up through the ranks. But yeah, that's the uh, that's the plan for now. I guess research is something that I quite enjoy as well. Um, it's 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 nice um, just to have on the side as well. Yes, but yeah. also that research is so valuable and. It, you know, giving people with visual impairment mm. potentially a little bit of hope for the future. Yeah, definitely. I think that research is is, is the uh, future. Um, if we didn't have research, we wouldn't be able to sort of figure out new cures for lots of problems that can be cured, in fact. Yeah. So on that note, <laughs> diving, let's t diving into your research, um, we've got a few questions here mm -hmm. I thought I would ask you today. Yeah. And just like our viewers, I don't have that scientific training that you perhaps have or that understanding. So throughout this chat today, I'm going to ask you lots of questions mm -hmm. and probably dive a little bit deeper to understand yeah. Why? Why you do what you do, and how this helps um, our viewers and the and the members associated with Retina New sure. Zealand. So, first first big question. <laughs> My understanding is that Retina New Zealand have actually funded and supported you in your research this year. So, tell me about what your re research entailed. Right. Um, well, I guess essentially the our our research revolved around the big problem that diabetic retinopathy is the leading cause of preventable blindness in the world and uh, particularly in the working age population here in New Zealand. And, um, but current treatments for diabetic retinopathy aren't very effective. They're only about 50% effective. And that's usually after people have sort of full blown disease and the retinopathy is already pretty bad. But what we wanted to research was to see if, if, if there was sort of a um, inflammatory molecule that we could target that's a little bit higher up in the disease pathway so that we can prevent that from happening in the future. So yeah, that was um, that was sort of what our research was about and Retina New Zealand kindly funded us for that. That's amazing. Yeah. So um, tell me, what did that what did that research entail? Because my understanding is you actually worked with human donor tissue as well. So can you <laughs> yes, tell me yes. and, and our viewers as well, yes. what was that like? What what was involved? Yes, um, so we, we received human donor eye, eye, eyes pretty much from the New Zealand National Eye Bank. Um, so people kindly donated their eyes um, for our research. And what we did was we used those eye cups to investigate whether people with diabetic retinopathy had certain inflammatory molecules that were higher up in the disease pathway and we wanted to see whether we could actually target those inflammatory molecules and see if we could stop the disease pathway from happening in the future. Wow, so it was looking for the inflammation or the inflammatory molecule mm. and looking at how potentially in the future that can activate um, people to get what support and care earlier on or yeah. where is that research going? Well, well, what the research currently shows us is the fact that um, a particular inflammatory molecule, um, it's called NLRP3, may be involved in early pathogenesis of the disease. It, it, it might cause a disease to happen at the earlier stages. And so if we are able to target this particular molecule, NLRP3, we might actually be able to reduce 
the development of diabetic retinopathy wow. in the future. So that's where the research is heading towards in the future, um, where we can target this particular molecule. Mm. That would be incredible. So I believe we've got a couple of slides as well <laughs> that we're going to show. So you can yeah. explain to me and our viewers sure. yeah. what it looks like, what the what the information looks like and what that means mm. for the future of, of eye care mm. and retinopathy. So let's take a look. So you mentioned NLRP3. So what am I seeing here on the screen? Right. So NLRP3 is that um, inflammatory protein I was telling you about. And if we look at the second and third columns, what we can see is that the amount of red is highest in the diabetic retinopathy group. And what that tells us is that NLRP3 plays a role in the development of diabetic retinopathy, but not so much in people that are normal. And so what that tells us, oh. if we are able to target NLRP3 in people with diabetes, we might actually be able to um, prevent the development of diabetic retinopathy in the future. So is it likely that by pre-screening um, in, in the pre-screening process we might be able you might be able to detect in the future these markers yeah and potentially preempt the mm. likelihood of this how yeah. how how could this be done is it a screening process well there isn't sort of like a particular screening process at the moment usually we identify people with diabetic retinopathy when they have symptoms and that's a little bit too late down the disease pathway or people with poorly controlled diabetes might be screened um, in their eyes as well at some hospitals. But um, what we hope is that we can make it a little bit more simpler where somebody doesn't have to go to the doctors or they can just get it, um, just get it with a blood test in the community or simple sample or just seeing the op their optometrist as well. Um, at the end of the day, what we want to do is prevent di diabetic retinopathy from happening in the first place, as opposed to actually helping people who've already got Diabetic retinopathy. Right, so you want yeah. to be the the fence yeah. at the top. Something of the cliff. more upstream yes, as opposed gotcha. to downstream. Yeah. Yeah, I, that's great. And and I think too, you know, when you're having to treat a condition when it is quite through that prog progression mm. pathway, it's always a little bit harder and a little bit more complicated. Yeah. yeah. So being able to almost preempt the likelihood of this happening mm. means you're you're treating that cause rather <laughs> yeah, than the symptoms, Exactly. Right? It's, it's, it's all about likelihood, isn't it? Mm -hmm. um, it's all about how likely somebody to develop diabetic retinopathy in the future based on all these criteria. And you can just use those criteria and, and, and say like, okay, we should probably give this person a certain drug that blocks that protein that we talked about yes. so that they don't develop it in the future. So... Oh, this is so positive. So what does this mean for for people who um, have a higher likelihood? So they may be they may have diabetes already and they may may already have a, a, a higher likelihood of developing retinopathy. Mm. Is there hope? Well, I would say yes, potentially, um, although the research is still pretty new, it's still developing. Um, a lot of these things that we're researching have only been in the workings for about a couple of years. But looking towards the future and based on what our research tells us is the fact that um, if we are able to target this particular inflammatory protein, there might be a chance that we can slow down the progression of diabetic retinopathy in the future. We know that that protein plays a particular role in the jump from diabetes just on its own to diabetic retinopathy. So if we can block that somewhere in the middle, we might be able to stop that from happening. That is fantastic news. That yeah. like that's literally brilliant. Thank you so much, <laughs> and congratulations on the work that you've done. Oh, I, you. I know this is a a big part of that journey to getting a lot to providing a lot of hope for people both with diabetes and potentially with retinopathy in yeah. the future. So congratulations. Right. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, Retina New Zealand has an ongoing commitment to supporting scientific and medical research that leads to better outcomes in the prevention, diagnosis and treatment of retinal disorders. They're here to support you and all Kiwis living with visual impairment. If you need help, reach out retina.org.nz. Jack, thank you and congratulations. No worries, thank you.